Hey everybody, I thought I'd create this video to help you understand the SPDF notation for electron configurations. The SPDF notation is one of the more confusing concepts of the new syllabus, so I thought I'd use an analogy to help you both remember and understand the concept. So I'll be using OneNote as well as some of my own illustrations to bring this concept across. So let's get to it. So the name of the game is Hotel Constructron. You're the nucleus tasked with creating some hotels for electrons to live in. Now, as the construction manager or the nuclear boss, you have two blueprints in your hand. You have the periodic table and the off-bow principle. So in this analogy, in this analogy, we use the levels of the hotel to represent the primary energy levels, whilst we use the rooms to represent the sublevels, that's the SPDF sublevels. We use beds to represent the orbitals, so one way to remember that is orbital. And the electrons will sit in the beds, or sleep in the beds, and you have two electrons per bed. So let's get to it. The first hotel we're going to build is the Hotel Zinc. So the first thing we'll do is we'll unroll the blueprint for the periodic table and we'll locate zinc on the table. So if you notice on the table, you have zinc right here. So what can you tell? You can tell that exists in period four and it has an atomic number of 30. So let's look at that a little bit closer. So being in period four means you have four levels. So you have four levels to the hotel zinc. Now, if you have an atomic number of 30, that means you have 30 protons, but in a neutral atom, this also means you have 30 electrons. So your hotel has four levels and it needs to be able to accommodate 30 electrons. So the first thing you do is you start building your hotel and you have four levels, just like you see here. But how do you fill this hotel now with rooms? So let's take a closer look at rooms. So the rooms which represent the sublevels come in different types. We have S rooms, P rooms, D rooms, and F rooms. Now the S rooms can only hold one bed. The P rooms can only hold three beds. The D rooms can hold five beds. And the F rooms can hold seven beds. What this means is that each bed sits, sleeps two electrons. So if you have one bed, you can have two electrons living in this room. Okay, but the next question would be, how do we place these rooms in the levels? That's where the off-bow principle comes in. So what you do is you unroll your second blueprint, the off-bow principle, but wait, it's blank. It's the intern, turns out he, he gave you the wrong one, so he gave you a blank piece of paper instead. But the off-bow principle was quite an easy thing to do, so we'll be writing this from scratch. The first thing we do is we, whoops, uh, the first thing we do is write the S column. So we write 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S. This can go up to 7, but because we know we have 4 levels, I'm going to stop at 4. Then we move on to the P column. So we skip the previous one we started at. So this time I'm going to start at 2. 2P, 3P, 4P. The same with D. We're just going to skip the previous one. So we start at 3D, 4D. Then we skip the previous one and we do 4F here. So just like I mentioned before, we have one bed, but that means you can have two electrons in there. So what we do is, in the blueprint, we write the number of electrons at the top. So we write a two here. So one bed or one orbital, but two electrons. So if you look at the P rooms, P has three beds, but that is the same as holding six electrons. So you write a six at the top, The D rooms can hold five beds, and five beds is the same as 10 electrons. So over here, you write 10. And for F rooms, F rooms can hold seven beds, and seven beds means 14 electrons. Great. 
Now, what do we do? What do we do from here? Well, the thing is, this gives you a plan on how to to draw, to add the add the rooms to your levels. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to be making the rooms for zinc. Now, zinc has an atomic number of 30. So that's what we're aiming for. So what we do is we go down and to the left to order the rooms. So right now I have 1, 1, S, 2. So I'm going to keep track of the number of electrons I'm up to at the bottom here. So I'm going to write a 2 here. Now 2, S, 2. So there's two electrons here, so I'm going to add that to the total. So right now I have four. Then you move 2p6. Now 6 plus 4 gives us 10. Then we have 3s2. So I'm going to add 2 to 10 to give me 12. Then we have 3p6. And I'm going to add 6 to 12 to give me 18. Then we have 4 s2 and then 2 plus 18 gives us 20 then we have 3 d 10 and then 10 plus 20 gives us 30 and that's exactly what we want just remember that if you had uh, more electrons say for example you had 31 and you were gallium you would have to go into the next room to put that electron and that would be 4p1 if you had 31 electrons but because we have 30 we end here so what do we do uh, this actually tells you the spdf notation for zinc so you're actually already done but what we're going to do is we're going to actually be building our zinc hotel so let's construct the rooms so this is the answer we had before and this is the levels of the rooms we saw so let's complete this analogy now what, what does this all mean so remember the, the number on the outside, the big number, means the level, okay? So level 1, we have an S2 here. Level 2, we have S2. Level 2, we have a P6. Level 3, we have S2. Level 3, we have P6. Level 4, we have S2. And level 3, we have D10. Now, what does this all mean altogether? So if we were to look at this in terms of the primary energy levels, you can count the electrons at the top. So in the first level, you have 2. Then in the second level, you have 8. Then in the third level, you have 2 plus 6 plus 10 to give you 18. And in the fourth level, you have 2. So zinc has the primary energy levels of 2, 8, 18, and 2. So... If you were to think about it, you probably heard that zinc has a valence of plus 2. Um, so the way you figure that out is that because you have two electrons in the outer shell, it's easier to lose two electrons than to gain six electrons to get the full octet in the outer shell. So that means if zinc was to lose two electrons, it would become plus 2. So it has a valence of plus 2. Let's take this analogy one step further. So we have our hotel built, we have our rooms, and we have our electrons happily sleeping in the orbitals inside the rooms. Now in terms of what this means uh, from your traditional orb, uh, electron diagram, I'm going to draw this dot to represent the nucleus, and then I'm going to use the uh, oval tool to draw me some energy levels. So this is the first level, the second level, the third level, oops, and the fourth level. And then I'm going to use a green pen to uh, represent the electrons. Now if you have two electrons in the second in the first level you have two electrons here then if you have eight electrons in the second level you have eight electrons like that four five six seven eight and then you have 18 in the third level 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that was never going to be perfect. And then in level four, you have two electrons um, to finish this off. So one, two. And that's the traditional uh, electron diagram you see. Um, and hopefully this helps you illustrate the analogy that we have. So remember, levels of the hotel are the primary energy levels, the main rings or the shells. Then if you have sublevels, the SPDF, SPDF are basically the rooms and they're like uh, a region that exists in the primary energy level. Then you have the, orbit the orbitals. So the orbitals exist within the sublevels and each orbital represents a bed. So a bed holds two electrons. S, S, sublevels, hold one bed or one orbital. P, orbitals, hold three beds. Uh, D, orbitals, hold five beds. And F, orbitals, hold uh, seven beds. Alrighty, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'd personally like to thank you. I help run Prelim Discussion Group 2018. So you can search me, you can search for the group over here. Uh, this is me. So what I'm doing this year is I'm prototyping some a few projects um, for Educatch, which is looking to merge technology with education. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you could fill out my survey. So I'd also appreciate it if you have any questions for me, if you have any feedback, whether you're a student, a teacher, someone that just enjoys these videos, please leave a comment, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks and bye from now.